Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the first DOST DA Technology Transfer Forum. Our theme for this event is TechFlix, Kabuhayan, Kita, at Kaunlaran. Tunay ngang naangkop na tema para sa araw na ito. Ako po si Noel Katibog mula sa Technology Transfer and Promotion Division ng DOST Picard. At ako po ang magiging tagapagpadaloy ng ating programa ngayong umaga. With the goal of providing opportunities for various developers to pitch their mature technologies to potential investors, the OST Picard and the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Agricultural Research collaborated to bring you the first DOST DA Technology Transfer Forum. We're streaming live via Cisco WebEx and Facebook Live. In line with both agencies' efforts to intensify the transfer and commercialization of generated technologies, this forum aims to serve as a venue for the public to learn more about DOST and DA-funded breakthroughs geared towards agricultural productivity, business competitiveness, and income improvement of farmers and fisher folk. Bilang panimula, tayo po muna ay manalangin at magbigay pugay sa ating watawa. Ama namin makapangyarihan, nagpapakumbaba kami ang lumalapis sa iyo upang itaas ang iyong pangalan. Sinasamba ka namin ng may pasasalamat at pukpupurin dahil sa ginagawa mo sa aming buhay, araw-araw. Hinihilig namin ang kapatawaran sa aming mga kasalanan upang makalapit kami sa iyo ng may malinis na puso. Panginoon, dalangin namin na sa gitna ng pandemya ay patuloy mo po kaming gabayan at protektahan. Bigyan mo po kami ng lakas upang nga magampanan namin ang mga abagay na dapat naming ibigay sa aming mga pinaglilingkuran. Panantitiliin mo pong ligtas sa mga namumuno sa amin at bigyan mo po sila ng katalinuhan upang maisaayos at mapaganap ang nais mo para sa iba't ibang ahensya na kanilang pinangungunahan at sa aming bansa. Ikaw lang po Panginoon ang aming matatakbuhan sa lahat ng oras. Naniniwala kami na kung wala ka sa aming buhay, ay wala rin po kaming magagawa. Huwag mo po kaming iiwan o pababayaan. Ikaw lang ang aming sandigan at muog na aming masasandalan. Maghari ka na wa sa puso ng bawat isang Pilipino o sa mundo at makilala ka nila bilang kanilang Panginoon at kapagligtas. Ito ang aming dalangin sa pangalan ng aming Panginoong Heso Kristo. Amen. Mga kababayan, ang pambansang awit ng Pilipinas. Ayang Bago natin opisyal na umpisahan ang ating programa, paalala lamang po uh, para sa ating mga importanteng house rules. We highly encourage everyone to register your attendance using the link provided in the chat box. Your, for participants joining through WebEx, kindly identify yourselves properly 
by indicating your agency or company name next to your full name. Kindly use the event virtual background, which you can download through the link provided in the chat box. Also, microphones must be muted during the pitch or presentation to avoid unnecessary noise and distraction. For any concerns, you may chat any of the WebEx co-hosts to help you. After the event, please answer the evaluation forms with the link provided in the chat box. The certificate of attendance will be given to those who have registered and accomplished the evaluation forms. Yun po ang ating mga house rules para ngayong araw na ito. Okay, umpisahan na po natin. Tayo po ay pinalad na makasama natin sa araw na ito ang mga pinuno ng DOST at DA. Ang welcome remarks po ay magbumula sa Sekretary ng Department of Science and Technology. Akin po muna siyang bibigyan na angkop na pagkilala. Fortunato Boy Tanseco de la Peña started his professional career at the ESO Standard Eastern as Cost and Operations Engineer in 1969 after graduating with a BS Chemical Engineering degree from the University of the Philippines that year. He then took up graduate studies in industrial engineering at the same university. He joined the UP College of Engineering faculty as an instructor in 1973 and rose to become full professor in 1988. He served UP in various capacities as chairman of the Department of Industrial Engineering and Operations Research, as assistant to the executive director of the National Engineering Center, as director of the Institute for Small Scale Industries and as system vice president for planning and development. He taught industrial engineering and operations research at the University of the Philippines for 43 years from 1973 to 2016. He was seconded to the National Science and Technology Authority, which later became the Department of Science and Technology three times as head of its planning service, as director of its Technology Application and Promotion Institute, and as undersecretary for scientific and technical services, after which he retired in 2014. In 2016, he was appointed DOST secretary. He led a number of professional organizations as president. These are the Philippine Institute of Chemical Engineers, the Association of Management and Industrial Engineers of the Philippines, the National Research Council of the Philippines, and the Philippine Association for the Advancement of Science and Technology. He also served as chair of the UN Commission on Science and Technology for Development. The awards he received include the Dangal ng Bayan Award for the Civil, from the Civil Service Commission, the Outstanding Career Executive Officer Award from the Career Executive Service Board, the Outstanding Professional Award from the Professional Regulations Commission, the UP Alumni Association Award for Public Service, the UP Alumni Engineers Most Distinguished Alumnus Award, the UP Alumni Association Lifetime Distinguished Achievement Award, and the Ateneo Government Service Award. UP conferred on him the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa in 2018. Ito po ang mensahe sa atin ni Secretary Fortunato Boy de la Peña. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Welcome to the first DOST DA Technology Transfer Forum. Sa lahat po ng mga opisyales, ahensya, organisasyon at entrepreneurs na kasama natin ngayon, nais kong magpasalamat sa inyong lahat sa inyong pagdalo. I would also like to acknowledge Secretary William Dar and Dr. Bibencio Mamaril of the Department of Agriculture and DOST under Secretary Ruena Cristina Guevara and uh, DOST Picard Executive Director Dr. Reynaldo Ebora. To the organizers, thank you for coming up with this event. Thank you also to our viewers from the private sector or industries. I am hopeful that you will be our future partners 
and takers of our local inventions. With the team TechFlix, Kabuhayan, Kita, at Kaunlaran, this event highlights the situation we are all in. We are mostly exchanging our interactions through our screens. I am inspired by the idea that despite this, we are still able to connect. This requires a different approach, which is why our technology pictures were trained during a two-day activity under the guidance of Dr. Lili Ann Lando to make sure our TechFlix experience will be worthwhile. We are determined to be a country known as an innovation achiever. So if you want to help our country make a mark in the global innovation landscape, better choose this moment. Choose a Filipino invention. Invest on our local technologies. These are extraordinary times and we must take extraordinary actions to collaborate, to help out, to rebuild our economy through our science and technology creations. This is not just about the negotiation and the trade. It is also about building relationships. Your investment will strengthen our research and development initiatives and inspire our inventors to create more innovations. Your active participation will nurture and promote the culture of innovation. We made sure that every technology pitch promises kabuhayan, kita, at kaunlaran. This government industry academic collaborative event teaches us that we have the goods and the value-adding elements, but we need to reach out and innovate to make sure Filipinos will get the best outcomes and benefits from these science and technology creations. With that, I am looking forward to the ripples of change that this event will create. Creativity and innovativeness coupled with the best science and technology know-how and with a good business sense will bring us to the ranks we would like to be known for. Again, let me congratulate and commend all the organizers, the technology pitchers, and technology takers. May this first DOSTDA Technology Transfer Forum not be the last. Muli magandang umaga at maraming salamat. Maraming salamat po, Secretary De La Peña. Ang opening message naman po ay magmumula sa pinuno ng kagawaran ng pagsasaka. William Duliente Dar is a Filipino horticulturist and public servant who is the 45th Secretary of the Department of Agriculture in 1998. In his short stint, the agriculture sector registered an unprecedented growth of 9.8% despite the harsh El Nino, which today is unmatched. After 21 years, he was once again called to serve the department and elevate the Philippine agriculture with his new thinking approach and establish a food secure Philippines with prosperous farmers and fisher folk. Despite the numerous challenges, the sector remained afloat with the implementation of the plant, plant, plant program launched at the onset of the worldwide pandemic. In the coming months, the agriculture and fisheries sector will continue to grow, reboot, and survive under the 1DA reform agenda as the department pursues major programs and activities that will pave the way to attain a modest agriculture sector growth of 2.5% and transform Philippine agriculture into a modern and sustainable pillar of economic development. Friends, ladies and gentlemen, our servant leader, Secretary William Manungwili Doliente Dar. Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. My warmest greetings to DOST Secretary Fortunato T. De La Peña, DOST Picard Executive Director Dr. Ray Ebora, and DA Bar Director Choi Mamaril. 
Friends, ladies and gentlemen, magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Technology developers, inventors, potential investors, participants, guests, evaluators, a pleasant morning to all. Last month, through a memorandum, I instructed the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Agricultural Research, to organize a technology transfer forum in coordination with the Department of Science and Technology, Philippine Council for Agriculture, Aquatic and Natural Resources, Research and Development, PICARD, and the DA Banner Programs. Serving as the pioneer director of DA Bar and uh, also having been an executive director of DOST PICARD, I am particular about transferring, upscaling the generated technologies from the numerous science and technology and research for development projects supported by both agencies. R4D for me is the solid base on which our pivot to an agribusiness orientation in the sector rests. On this note, let me acknowledge both agencies, the ABAR and the US Picard, for taking steps to complement and harmonize efforts to bring technologies to our stakeholders. The conduct of this technology transfer forum is considered timely and relevant for our technology developers and potential investors, technology takers, providing them a platform to engage in collaborative talks, knowledge exchange, hence access to new opportunities in their chosen fields. The event is in line with the efforts of our agencies to intensify and support the transfer and commercialization of technologies generated from government-funded SNT and R4D initiatives. This early on, let me commend the 20 technology developers who are among our relentless partners towards a technology-empowered agriculture and fishery sector contributory to inclusive growth and development. During the technology pitching session, the technology generators and technology transfer officers from various SNT and R4D institutes and the academy will present their innovations and business ideas to potential investors. With 20 technologies on hand to be showcased, nine farm machineries and 12 food-related technologies, I encourage our private sector partners or budding agripreneurs to support us in bringing these technologies to their intended users. The private sector and industry players can take advantage of this forum to learn more about DOST and DA-generated breakthroughs geared towards agricultural productivity and business competitiveness. At the end of the activity, our goal is to have prospective investment deals that would bring these innovations to the field and to the market. Allow me to take this opportunity to also share the 1DA reform agenda, which serves as a guide of the department in pursuing major programs and activities in 2021 towards transforming the agriculture and fishery sector into a, a dynamic high growth sector that promotes investments and inclusive growth built on the four pillars of consolidation, modernization, industrialization, and professionalization. The 18 key strategies in the reform agenda anchor 
cross-cutting action plans to provide support and implement the DA's programs, activities, and projects. The 1DA framework naturally mobilizes the whole of the agriculture sector, including our partners in the various R4D institutions, both from the government and private entities. The collaborative efforts are all geared towards supporting and developing technologies, commercializing, and incorporating strategies to increase productivity and profitability of stakeholders. Anticipated technological advances in the field of S&T and R4D paved the way for improving not only productivity and income, but also nutritional and environmental characteristics prepared by both consumers and farmers and fishers. Despite the challenging times brought by the pandemic, let us work towards the further creation and commercialization of these technologies, ultimately with the improvement of Filipino lives as the end goal. To DA Bar and DOSTP card, may this be the start of more fruitful investment fora. Let us sustain and work together until our targets are achieved. Thank you and mabuhay tayong lahat. God bless us all. Salamat po, uh, Secretary Dar, sa inyong napakagandang mensahe. Ang ating pong susunod na tagapagsalita ay si Dr. Vivencio R. Mamaril para naman po ipakilala ang mga kasama nating participants, inventors, potential investors, at di pa bang mga bisita sa ating pagtitipon. <coughs> Dr. Vivencio Mamaril is currently the Director of the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Agricultural Research, which oversees and manages the research for development programs and projects for the agriculture and fisheries sector. Dr. Choi, as he is fondly called, has exemplified invaluable government service for the past 40 years. Testament to this is the trust and confidence bestowed to him because of his excellent management and leadership. Before serving as the DA Bar Director in 2020, he served as the Director of the Bureau of Agriculture and Fisheries Standards in 2017 and as OIC Director of Bureau of Plant Industry in 2016 and as the Director of the Department of Agriculture Biotechnology Program Management Office in 2014, among others. He has a strong background and expertise in the fields of food safety standards, regulatory and research, plant pathology, and culture and management of crops. He obtained his Doctor of Philosophy in Management, Master of Science and Bachelor of Science degrees in Agriculture from Gregorio Araneta University Foundation, graduating with the second highest honor, Benemeritus, both in his PhD and MS degrees. He was also a recipient of various awards and recognitions for his notable developmental works and contributions in agriculture through writing research papers and scientific articles, implementation of relevant laws and regulations, contributions in various capacities, and involvement in numerous technical and managerial working committees of the DA and other organization. Mga kapamilya, kapuso at kapanalig, sa larangan ng agrikultura, <coughs> DA Bar's hardworking and dedicated director, Dr. Vivencio R. Mamaril. Salamat Noel at magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Para hindi yata ako yung pinakilala mo. <laughs> okay. Uh, natutuwa naman ako na kung ako nagkakamali ito po yung first time na nagsanib pwersa ang DOST at ang Department of Agriculture sa ganitong technology forum. Ano? Dati kasi hiwalay natin ginagawa ito. Ngayon ang uh, there is energy pagka tayo ay nagsanib o nagsanib pwersa. And we're very happy na, na this is the first time we're doing it. Tapos panahon pa ng pandemya, now 
at sa ganitong uh, pagkakataon at teknoloji ang ating gagamitin. Now, allow me also now to take a role, you know, to call the role ng mga important people na taga-industriya na ito yung kanina. Kung meron tayong mga investors, sa ito naman yung ating mga potential na takers of our investments or our inventions sa uh, Department of Agriculture and the Department of Science and Technology. Allow me to read them, no? Hindi ko lang alam kung narito na sila or baka mamayang hapon sila umatin. But perhaps, I think uh, marami na sa kanila ang narito ngayon. Una, Virgilio Badilla, who is the president ng Federation of Cattle Racers Association of the Philippines. Dr. Noel Soliman III, president ng Federation of Goat and Sheep Producers Association of the Philippines. Narito rin po si Roderico Bioco, president. National Corn Competitiveness Board, Stephanie Nicole Sarmiento Garcia, President, Philippine Acquired Association of Feed Millers, Felix Tukinhoy, President, the Philippine Association of Meat Processors Incorporated, Danilo B. Fausto, President, the Philippine Chamber of Agriculture and Food Incorporated, Engineer Roger Navarro, the President, of the Philippine Maize Federation Incorporated. Uh, Pedro Co, Chairperson of Fresh Food Dealers Association and Marketing Incorporated. Marilu Florendo, Chairperson, Integrated Food Manufacturers Association of the Philippines for Productivity. Val Turtur, Chairperson, Cacao Industry Development Association of Mindanao. Joanne Sandique, the Chair, Person of the Cacao Pilipina Sensory Resources Incorporated, David Santos, Chairperson ng Katribo ng Lasang Foundation Incorporated. Narito rin po yung President ng Alliance of Philippine Fishing Federations Incorporated, Mr. Alonso Tan. Julio Galvez Tan naman po, President ng Center for Empowerment and Resource Development Incorporated. Ferdinand Lim, President, Confederation of the Philippine Tuna Industries Incorporated. Rene Tayat, President, TGA Foods Corporation. Joel Panag Panagsagan, President, Agricultural Machinery Manufacturers and Distributors Association Foundation. Ayan, marami kaming agri-machinery sa ipipitch mamaya, Mr. Joel. Henry Lim Biong, President, Federation of Field Chinese Chamber of Commerce and SL Agritech Corporation. Hello, Sir Henry. Kinala ko po siya. Pasensya na po. Eduardo Umadhai, Chairperson, National Compet Cooperative Marketing Federation. Aurea Miklat Teves, President, National Food Coalition, Philippines. Rosemary Matala, President, National, no, National Market Vendors Confederation of Cooperatives. Herculano Co. Chairperson, Philippine Confederation of Grains Associations, Incorporated. Kuja Lee, President, Timely Tech Enterprises. Romel Madria, Manager, ACT Machineries and Metal Craft Corporation. Narito rin po si Bonifacio Stefan ng Durog Rural Improvement Club. Kasama niya po si Amalia Nobleza. Coordinator naman po ng SUS ng Kasava Growers Processors Association, Susan M. Peinado. Nato rin po yung manager ng Agri Component Corporation. Marivic Sevilla, the OIC Corporate Planning and Business Development and Tourism Promotions Board. Juan Negocio, Joe Concepcion, Presidential Advisor. Alegria Limhoco, President, Philippine Chamber of Commerce. And Roberto Amores, the President of the Philippine Food Processors and and Exporters Organization. Kanina dito sa listang, meron din ako nakita ang pangalan. Attorney Dulce uh, Punzelan, who is a World Bank, World Bamboo Ambassador natin and other representations po. Narito rin po ang mga key officials ng Department of Agriculture. Nadya kanina si nakita ko, Undersecretary Ariel T. Kayanan at ang aming Undersecretary ng Havali Crops, si Ma'am Evelyn Lavinia. And dito rin po ang mga ibang regional offices ng Department of Agriculture. And I also saw many DOSC officials uh, from other regions attending this. And of course, ang ating kapartners, state colleges and universities. 
Maring meron din po ako nasabing pangalan na patawad po pero mamaya po pwede pa rin po namin kayo acknowledge. So sa lahat po, magandang araw sa atin. Looking forward to a fruitful, mabunga at sana makaani tayo ng mga investments simula sa ating mga simula sa pribadong sektor. Tulad nga nang sabi kanina ni DOST Secretary uh, we call him uh, Boy de la Peña yung mga researchers sa katulad po nung unang panahon nagre-research po ako nung tumanda na ako hindi na na yung researchers ang aming um, motivation at inspiration yung kukuha at gagamit ng technology. So support us, continue supporting us and continue supporting ang ating local inventions uh, para sa sabi na rito kaularan at uh, kita no uh, yun lang po at maraming salamat po sa inyo at December uh, ano September na no maligayang Pasko na din advance greetings sa ating lahat salamat back to you Noel mas kita yung show maraming salamat Dr. Choi para sa iyong napakalinaw at nakakaaliw na mensahe Sa nakalipas na ilang taon, maraming mga batas at pulisiya ang naisakatuparan na naglalayong mapabuti ang kalagayan ng research at technology transfer sa ating bansa. Iahayag po ng susunod nating tagapagsalita na kasalukuyang Executive Director ng DOSTP Card ang Technology Commercialization Policies according to the Technology Transfer Act. Dr. Reynaldo V. Ibora formally joined PICARD on February 16, 2015 as its Acting Executive Director. Dr. Ebora is a member of the National Research Council of the Philippines, the Philippine Association for the Advancement of Science, Biotechnology Association of the Philippines Incorporated, and other professional and social cultural organizations. He has served as Deputy Director in 1996, Acting Director from 1999 to 2000, and Director from 2010 to 2015 of the UPLB Biotech. From 2005 to 2010, Dr. Ibora served as the Executive Director of the then DOST's Philippine Council for Advanced Studies, Advanced Science and Technology Research and Development of the DOST. Dr. Ibora was bestowed with multiple awards from various institutions and professional organizations. He obtained his BS Agriculture degree, major in entomology, and master's degree in entomology from UP Los Baños. He completed his PhD in entomology at the Michigan State University, USA. He also completed an international postgraduate uh, university course at Osaka University and as visiting fellow at Cornell University, USA. Narito po ang mensahe ng kasalukuyang executive director ng DOSTP card, Dr. Reynaldo V. Ebora. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Thank you, DOS Secretary Fortunato de la Peña and DA Secretary William Dar for your messages. I also would like to thank Dr. Bebenjo Mamaril of the DA Bar for introducing our guests and evaluators today. This event we're holding now, the first DOST DA Technology Transfer Forum, is indeed a milestone for both DOST and DA as we continue to embark on the challenges of making our technologies more accessible to our countrymen. At the DUST, DUST Picard is the government funding agency that caters to the agriculture, aquatic, and natural resources sector. One of our mandates is to advocate for technology commercialization as the Philippine Technology Transfer Act of 2009 calls us to serve and provide research grants and other technical and material support, as well as monitor efforts and effectiveness of the RDI in securing intellectual property protection and pursuing IP commercialization, as well as provide alternative solutions and assistance in case of shortfall in the RDI's performance in protecting, utilizing, and commercializing the IP. In almost the same vein, the Department of Agriculture's Bureau of Agricultural Research, or DABAR, is the lead coordinating agency for research for development towards a technology-empowered agriculture and fisheries sector contributory to inclusive growth. Clearly, the USD Picard and DA Bar share a common goal of empowering the AANR sector by providing support to our countrymen in their operations and activities. 
The answer to this is, of course, technology transfer. That's why it is only fitting to actively coordinate this event that shall highlight the importance of transferring and upscaling the generated technologies through numerous projects supported by the two agencies. While we are coming from the vision of the Philippine Technology Transfer Act of 2009, we are also supported by numerous policies that encourage the commercialization of technologies. Allow me to mention that as one of our concrete actions to fast track this endeavor, Picard established the DOST Picard Innovation and Technology Center, or DPITC, in Los Baños, Laguna. Technologies generated in the ANR sector can now benefit from better promotion activities, increased resources, and science and technology services. Our platform also answers to Republic Act No. 10816 on farm tourism, which states that by developing a farm tourism program that will feature common farm tourism-related recreational activities, we must also promote the mature technologies developed through the funds provided to various research and development institutes and state universities and colleges. With the enactment of the Philippine Technology Transfer Act, we also adopted an aggressive stance in pursuing the commercialization of new agri-aqua technologies to help bring about highly productive agri-aqua-based business enterprises. The Council implemented the DOSTP card National Agri-Aqua Technology Business Incubation Program, or ATBI, which aims to effectively support the use and commercialization of mature technologies in the agriculture, aquatic, and natural resources sector by establishing and developing viable agribusiness through technology incubation. Aside from RA10055, the ATBI program is a direct support to the implementation of RA11293, or the Philippine Innovation Act, and RA11337, or the Innovative Startup Act. Likewise, it is a direct policy intervention of the Philippine Medium-Term Development Plan to create greater demand for science, technology, and industry, and is one of the strategies of the Philippine National Innovation Strategy, or Philippine Innovation to support public-private partnerships and harness the creativity of Filipinos for national competitiveness. Lastly, with the signing of the DOST Administrative Order No. 5, or the implementing guidelines for the Startup Grant Fund of the DOST last May 28, 2021, we now have the policy that enables us to support the startups, our incubators, and startup enablers, or ATBIs, for years to come. We always say that the life cycle of technology does not end once it is invented. It will only be the start of its journey towards an innovation in itself. It requires action from the players of the Philippine innovation ecosystem to move technologies from the laboratories to the local and eventually the global market. Today, the first DUST DA Joint Technology Transfer Forum. May we all be inspired to work together and ensure that the Filipino people will get greater benefits from their businesses and these innovations. This is the common goal of our technology commercialization policies. Sama-sama po tayong magtulungan para sa isang malikhain at makabagong agrikultura ng Pilipinas. Thank you at magandang agham po sa ating lahat. Maraming salamat po, Doc Ray, and thank you very much to all our esteemed speakers for the opening program. Let us now begin the presentation of technologies that DA Bar and DOST Picard supported independently or together. We will start with five technologies focusing on rice farm machineries. Sa halos pitundaang kasama natin sa WebEx at FB Live, sulat lamang po sa chat box ang inyong mga tanong at paglilinaw at bibigyan kasagutan po yan ng ating mga presenters. Ang una po nating presenter para sa multipurpose seeder ay mula sa Philippine Rice Research Institute. Engineer Elmer Bautista, a supervising science research specialist of field rice, developed the multipurpose seeder technology. This technology is a riding type or walk-behind machine attached to a two-wheel tractor or kuliglig. 
used to dry direct seeding, used for dry direct seeding of rice, corn, and mung bean. It has an effective field capacity of 2.5 hectares per day and also comes with fertilizer applicator and mechanical weeder. Narito po ang kanyang presentation. Magandang araw po sa ating lahat, lalong-lalo na sa ating mga farmers at uh, manufacturers. Narito na po ang multi-purpose seeder para sa dry direct seeding ng ating palay, mais at mungo. Ang makinang ito ang kasagutan sa malaking problema sa sahod ulan na minsan ay di natin napagtutuunan ng pansin. Dahil nakita namin ang inyong pangangailangan, ay gumawa kami ng makina upang solusyonan ang mga problemang nakikita natin sa ating pagsasaka sa mga sahod ulan areas at nang mapaunlad ang pagsasaka natin sa kanayunan. Ang development ng teknolohiyang ito ay nagsimula pa noong 2017 sa pamamagitan ng isang proyekto kasama ang Philrise at IRI. Nagpatuloy ang proyektong ito noong 2019 kasama naman natin ang UPLB upang maisaayos pa ang development ng ating uh, multi-purpose seeder. Ito ay financial support ng DA Bar. Ang MP seeder ay ginawa para hilahin ng hand tractor na karaniwang pag-aari na ng mga magsasaka upang di na kailangang bumili ng panghila upang hindi na karagdagang gastos ang ating mga magsasaka. Ang operator ay nakasakay na habang nag-ooperate ng MP seeder o pwede rin namang maglakad kung di pwede ding sumakay dahil sa malambot na lupa. Ang distansya ng direct seeding ay pwedeng i-adjust pati na ang lalim. Ito ay depende kung ano ang preference ng ating mga farmers. Ang MP seeder ay kayang mag-direct seed ng dalawat kalahating hektarya kada araw. At hindi lamang palay ang pwede niyang itanim, kundi pwede rin sa mais at mung bean. Bakit ba natin dinevelop ang MP seeder? Ano ang mga problema sa bukid? Sa rainfed areas po kasi o sa sahod ulan at sa tail end areas ay malaki ang problema sa tubig. Maraming tubig sa tag ulan pero minsan ay wala. Low productivity din sila. Halos dalawang tonelada lang ang karaniwang ani nila. Ang production cost nila ay mataas din dahil napakaraming human labor ang kailangan. Umaabot sa 17 katao kapag ka parmalite ang ginamit habang 26 katao kung sudsud sa Ilocos Norte ang ginamit. Pero isa pang problema ay kakulangan ng tao dahil may kanya-kanya tayong mga gawain. Isa pang problema ay wala talagang available na teknolohiya para magamit. Gustuhin man nilang magmakina pero wala namang makuhang makina. Karamihan ay mano-manong pagsabog o broadcast seeding. Sa paniki at new era, Ilocos ay sudsud ang karaniwang ginagawa. Sa parting Pangasinan at Tarlac naman ay parmalite at line seeding naman sa gawing Balunggaw at Umingan, Pangasinan. Napakaraming tao ang kailangan at ang seed na ginagamit ay umaabot sa 240 kilos per hectare. Sa picture ay makikita nyo ang MP seeder na nakakabit sa hand tractor. Ang hopper ay lalagyan ng binhi habang seeding operation. May upuan ang operator. Ang ground wheel ay siyang nagpapaikot ng uh, metering device. Ang paro opener ay parang isang maliit na araro upang gumawa ng kanalet. Doon nahuhulog ang seed at isasara naman agad ng paro closer. Kaya di na makikita ng ibon at daga at di na rin maarawan. Kaya protektado ang ating mga binhi. Sa ay makikita natin ang mga katangian ng MP seeder. Sa palay ay apat na rows ang ginagamit upang magawa ang 20 cm distansya ng dry direct seeding. Tigdadalawang row naman kung mais at munggo upang makuha natin ang distansyang 60 cm layo ng direct seeding. Ang laling ng, ng tanim ay adjustable, depende sa gusto ng ating mga farmer. Makikita ang tipid sa binhi 
sa palay halimbawa ay 40 to 60 kilos kada hektarya. Sa mais ay 18 kilos at 24 kilos naman sa munggo. Kaya kapag binilang ang mga butil sa isang metro ay may 33 binhi ng palay, apat kada metro sa mais at 26 naman sa munggo. Gaya ng sinabi ko kanina, karaniwang nakasakay na ang operator para di nagaanong mapagod. At pwede ding maglakad kung hindi favorable ang paghahanda ng lupa dahil sa sobrang lambot. Sa economic analysis namin, ayon sa mga nakuha namin data sa paggamit ng MP Seeder, ang gross income na makukuha natin ay mahigit 40,000 sa MP Seeder. Sa paro seeding ay mas mababa ang gross income dahil mas malaki ang gastos niya, lalo na sa broadcast seeding. Kaya sa kabuuan, lalabas na mas mataas ang net income sa paggamit natin ng MP Seeder. Sinubukan namin mag-assume at pinansya ang economic analysis ng MP Seeder. Kung ang MP Seeder ay 38,000 mo binili na halimbawang tatagal ng limang taon at kung halimbawa 1,000 ang paupahan mo sa kada hektarya at 2.5 hektar ang kaya sa isang araw, Ganito ang lalabas sa computation. Ang generated income ay 53,000. Sa loob ng kulang isang taon ay mababawi mo ang gastos at may net income kang 31,000 kada taon. Ang MP Seeder ay registered na utility model ng PhilRice noong 2019. Nakapag Amtec test na po ang ating limang manufacturer sa Region 1, 2, 3, 6, at Region 12. At ilan sa mga manufacturer ay pumasa na sa Fairness Opinion Board. So, saan ka pa? MPC there na! Maraming salamat, Engineer Bautista. Kung merong seeder ang field rice, meron namang rice transplanter attachment ang MIRDC at yan ang ipapakilala sa atin ni Engineer Maria Gurley Milio. Engineer Milio is a chemical engineer with a master's degree in technology management. She is currently the supervising science research specialist of the technology advisory and business development section of the Technology Diffusion Division of DOST MIRDC or Metals Industry R&D Center. Her team handles consultancy, IP management, and technology transfer and commercialization activities of MIRDC. She will be presenting the technology of Engineer Isidro D. Milio, which is a rice transplanter implement that can be readily mounted to and dismounted from the common hand tractor. This was invented to significantly increase the utilization of hand tractor in farm areas, as well as to reduce the cost of farm level mechanization that will directly benefit the farmers, rice field owners, and planters. Tunghaya natin ang presentation ni Engineer Milion. Naririnig ninyo yung kantang yan? Masaya ano? Sa painting ni Marsolo, makikita din natin masayang nagtutulungan ang mga magsasaka habang nagtatanim ng palay. Ngunit, pag pinakinggan natin ang liriko ng kanta, maririnig natin na mahirap ang pagtanim ng palay. Masakit ang braso, nangangawit ang baywang, namimintig ang binti. Totoo nga yata na ang pagtatanim ng palay ay hindi biro. Ikumpara natin sa mga kalapit nating bansa na pag-iiwanan na tayo sa pag ng ating pagsasaka. Ibig sabihin, karamihan ng farmers natin ay gumagamit pa rin ng manual labor. At kung meron man, limitado lang ang makinarya na ginagamit nila sa pagtatanim ng palay. Katulad din sa ibang bansa, ang ating mga magsasaka ay tumatanda na. The average age of Filipino farmers is 57 years old. Ika nga, malapit na sila sa retirement age. At ang ating magsasaka ng palay ay may maliit lang na kahilingan. Iyon ay mapagaan at mapabilis ang proseso nila sa pagtatanim. At mapababa ang gasos nila, lalo na sa labor. 
Karamihan sa ating magsasaka ay gumagamit ng hand tractors or kuliglig. Ngunit ito ay karaniwang ginagamit lang sa pagbungkal o pagprepara ng lupa at ginagamit din nila bilang transportasyon. Bihirang gamitin ang hand tractors sa pagtatanim o transplanting. Ayon sa inventaryo ng Department of Agriculture, mayroong 300,000 kuliglig sa bansa. Pero karamihan ay nagsasabing aabot pa ito sa isang milyon. Dahil sa mga datos na ito at mitihiin ng DOST at MIRDC na makatulong sa mga magsasaka ng palay, gumawa ang researchers namin ng Rice Transplanter Attachment for Hand Tractors or RTA in short. Attachment na ito ay pandagdag sa accessories ng hand tractors na karaniwang mabibili sa merkado. Gamit ang attachment na ito, ang farmers ay kakayanin niya mag-transplant sa lawak ng 1.6 hectares per day gamit lang ng isang operator at isang helper. Pwede ding i-adjust ang planting distance at planting depth depende sa nakagawi ang pagtatanim. Adaptable ang RTA sa mga hand tractors na may 7 to 9 horsepower diesel engine. Paano po ito gumagana? Isipin nyo na lang na katulad ito ni Voltes 5. Ang RTA ay hindi kapantay ng mga dedicated transplanter machines na nakikita natin sa merkado. Pero ito ay higit sa manual transplanting dahil ito ay nangakangailangan lamang ng dalawang katao, isang operator at isang helper sa paglalagay ng mga binhi. Hindi katulad ng manual planting na nangangailangan ng labing apat katao para magawa ang isang 1.6 hectares sa isang araw. Subalit, ang kagandahan naman ng RTA kumpara sa dedicated transplanters ay kung mabalahaw sa bukid, maaari itong i-detach o tanggalin at dahil magaan ito, maaari itong buhatin ng dalawa o tatlong katao lamang. Ang production cost nito ay nasa around 90,000 pesos at maaari pang mapababa pag marami yung gagawin or tinatawag nating economies of scale. Ayon din sa aming survey sa mga farmers, willing po silang magbayad hanggang 155,000 pesos. Ang design ng RTA ay pamagmay-ari ng MIRDC. Ito ay may utility model registration sa IPOFIL. Ang RTA ay gawa ng mga mechanical engineers at agricultural engineers ng MIRDC sa tulong ng mga experts from PhilMEC. Ito ay dumaan din sa actual field testing in Nueva Ecija at Laguna. Ang ninanais ng DOST at MIRDC na ito ay madala sa merkado. Ililipat namin ang teknolohiya sa pamamagitan ng pagbigay ng design, operations manual, at tutulong din kami sa pag-promote ng technology. Maaari ding mag-avail yung aming mga licenses ng discount on fees sa paggamit ng aming machine shop, fabrication at ibang facilities ng MIRDC. Ito ay maaari ding i-produce at ibenta ng mga interested uh, transferee or fabricators. Maaari din itong rentahan ng mga farmers cooperatives at mismo ng mga farmers. Ang design ng RTA ay nag-conform na sa PNS PAES 151 Agricultural Machinery Mechanical Rice Transplanter Specifications. Dahil maganda ang pagkatanim at magiging maganda din ang aanihing palay. Ang mga farmers natin ay maaari din sila makatipid ng about 8,300 pesos kada ektarya sa matitipid sa labor cost at potential income sa pag-service sa ibang farmers compared sa manual transplanting. At dahil locally fabricated, mas madali na sa ating mga farmers or may-ari ng RTA na magpa-repair or magpa-maintain nito pag nasira. Base sa ginawa naming market survey kung saan nagtanong kami sa mga farmers sa iba't ibang bahagi ng Pilipinas, sa Nueva Ecija in Northern Luzon, Laguna in Southern Luzon, Iloilo sa Visayas at Bukidnon sa Mindanao, ang may mas mataas na interes sa RTA ay yung mga nasa Northern Luzon at Mindanao. Assuming na makakuha ka ng maliit na market na around uh, 4 to 18 percent, maaari itong magbigay ng total revenue na around 8.6 billion piso. 
at sa production cost na 91,000 pesos, ito ay maaring makapagbigay ng higit sa 3 bilyong pisong kita. Ang MIRDC po ay nag-iimbita at naghihikayat sa mga fabricators na maging licensee ng aming rice transplanter attachment or hand tractor technology. Preferably po mga agricultural equipment fabricators at kung sinong may interest na magdagdag ng product lines. Ang mga pangunahing kailangan namin ay letter of intent, financial report for the last three years, at list of machine and fabrication equipment. Yung licensing fee at royalty fees are negotiable. Kung meron kayong katanungan tungkol sa RTA at sa iba pang teknolohiya ng MIRDC, maaari po ninyo akong tawagan or mag-email po kayo. Tulungan po natin ang ating rice farmers na mapadali at mapabuti ang kanilang pagsasaka sa pamamagitan ng pagbigay ng teknolohiyang naaayon at abot kaya sa kanila. Sa MIRDC Rice Transplanter Attachment for Hand Tractors, ang pagtanim ay pwede nang gawing biro. Maraming salamat, Engineer Milio. Tunay na ngang sa laki ng potential na kikitain ay hindi biro ang uh, magiging uh, tagumpay ng kukuha ng inyong technology. Ang sagot naman dyan ng Phil Rice ay ito. Kung meron kayong transplanter attachment, meron naman kaming ride and riding type transplanter. At ito ay ahayag sa atin ni Engineer Joey Miano. Engineer Miano is an agricultural and biosystems engineer under the Rice Engineering and Mechanization Division of Field Rice. He is currently working on the research and development of farm machines and renewable energy technologies for rice farming. Engineer Miano, together with Dr. Arnold Juliano, developed the riding type rice transplanter technology, which is suitable for transplanting inbred and hybrid rice. It can transplant two to six seedlings per hill at a planting depth of two to six centimeters, hill spacing of 12 to 18 centimeters, and row spacing of 30 centimeters. It can also help minimize labor cost compared to manual transplanting, which requires 20 to 25 persons per day per hectare and takes only two persons to complete transplanting activities and has a planting capacity of two hectares per day with 24 hills per square meter planting density. Narito po ang presentation ni Engineer Miano. Good day everyone. Are you familiar with the Filipino folk song Magtanim May Dibiro? This song represents the struggles and difficulties of farmers doing manual rice transplanting. Ladies and gentlemen, may I offer you our riding type rice transplanter a machine that makes rice transplanting easy. This is Joey Piniano, a researcher from the Philippine Rice Research Institute. Transplanting is one of the most labor-intensive operations in rice farming. Traditional rice transplanting requires 20 to 25 man days to transplant a one hectare field. Synchronous planting after a rest period enables efficient use of irrigation water and avoids overlapping incidences of insect and disease populations, thereby preventing yield loss. With the seasonal operation, most farm laborers shifted to more stable source of income like construction and manufacturing industry, therefore limiting the number of farm labor during peak period of transplanting. Imported model counterparts were available at the market. However, it has higher acquisition costs and spare parts may not be readily available. Our riding type rice transplanter is the solution. It is locally made with high capacity of up to two hectares per day. Maintain uniform plant spacing and optimum plant density throughout the field. Mechanical transplanting provides less transplanting shock, early seedling vigor and uniform crop stand, and also lower the stress drudgery and health risk for farm laborers. Under the competitive advantage, there are already imported units available in the local market from riding type and walk behind type mechanical rice transplanters. The locally made riding type rice transplanter have advantages over the imported units in terms of unit cost and availability of spare parts. 
While on the imported walk behind units, the locally made wedding type rice transplanter has higher capacity, which is up to 2 hectare per day. For the economic of use, given the investment cost of 750,000 pesos and the prevailing custom rate of transplanting at 6,000 pesos per hectare, the investment can be recovered in one year and eight months, with a break-even point at 218 hectares and a benefit cost ratio of 1.34. It is profitable when the service area is at least 65 hectares per season. On the market potential, the target end users of our technology were the individual rice farmers with large field areas, farmer cooperatives, and farm service providers. With the total rice production area of the country, there is around 3.36 million hectares under the irrigated area. Considering the full capacity of one unit wedding type rice transplanter, at 70 hectares per season, targeting at least 10% share of the irrigated area, which is at 336,700 hectares, will be transplanted using the machine. Given that imported units were already in the market, a total supply of 4,810 units riding type press transplanter was required to transplant the targeted area. On the milestones, freedom to operate analysis of the machine was completed. The IP application was already submitted to IPO3 through the assistance of TOST TAPI. Three units were ready for pilot testing, and the funding for the second phase of pilot testing was approved by the US card. Let me introduce our team and key partner, Dr. Arnold Soliano. Joey Pimiano, and our collaborated manufacturer in the development of the machine, Mr. Virgilio F. Lanzuela, of Pearl Master Machinery and Industrial Services Corporation. Let us make rice transplanting easy for our farmers. Thank you very much. Maraming salamat, Engineer Miano. At kung meron tayong pangtanim ng palay, dapat meron din tayong maayos na pang-ani. Sunod pong ihahayag ni Ms. Chona Narvades ng field rice ang kanilang rice combine harvester. Ms. Narvades is a sales and promotion supervisor for who leads the marketing and technology transfer office under the business development division of field rice. She also helps in protecting field rice intellectual property as a, as a patent agent and product of the first dust picard intellectual property masterclass. Mr. Vades will be presenting the rice combine harvester invented by the team of Dr. Cesar Hiventino Tado. This technology is an improved rice combine harvester with ground drive rubber trucks, triple airstream separation system, screw type conveyor, and hydraulic system for header and real, real height adjustment. It has the ability to operate during wet harvest season with an increased capacity from 1.5 to 2 hectares per day. Tunghayan po natin ang presentation ni Ms. Narvades para sa Rice Combined Harvester. Hello and welcome to the first DOSTP card and DA Bar Joint Virtual Technology Forum. I will show you how the Field Rice Mini Rice Combined Harvester can help increase rice farm productivity in your area. At present, our farm practices show significant post-harvest losses. A big contributor to this is the losses from drying at 5.86%, followed by milling at 5.52%, harvesting to threshing at 4.29%, and storage at 0.8%. All of these activities reduce total field yield by as much as 16.47%. If we look closer at the post-harvest losses in manual harvesting, 2.18% is from threshing, 0.8% is from piling, and 2.03% is from reaping. With the adoption of the combined harvester, grain loss will only be at 2.11%, which translates to a recovery of 2.18% of grains harvested. To illustrate the post-harvest losses in rice production, studies from the Field Rice Socioeconomic Division show that for every 72 kavans of palay produced, almost 4 kavans are lost during harvesting to threshing. If we use 14 pesos as the prevailing price per kilogram of fresh palay, 
This translates to 2,300 pesos of lost income of every farmer per hectare. The imported combined harvester is being used at only 2.2% of our total rice area. Factors limiting the adoption are first, labor displacement. Farmers are afraid of losing their jobs and being replaced by mach machines. Second, high price. The cost of acquiring the machine is too high. Third, parts availability. The parts for the imported machine is hard to find. And lastly, the machine is big and heavy, which is not suitable for small paddy field. To address this, we give to you an appropriate harvesting technology for small sized plots and irregularly shaped fields, which we call the Bill Rice Mini Rice Combined Harvester. This machine, which can reap, thresh, clean, and bag grains in one operation, is proudly made and locally manufactured in the Philippines. The advantage of the mini combined harvester over the imported ones is that imported models are so big and heavy, which make them less efficient in small size and irregularly shaped body plots characterizing our fields. Meanwhile, it is also much faster and cost effective to use the mini rice combined harvester over the traditional manual reaping of pads. The intended markets of the mini rice combined harvester are individual farmer entrepreneurs, farmers organization and cooperatives, as well as government agencies which are implementing mechanization support programs such as the RCEP or the Rice Competitive Enhancement Program. Nearly 40,000 units of rice combined harvesters are needed to fully mechanize the available rice area nationwide. This is a big market opportunity for agricultural machinery manufacturing industry players now that we are facing globalization of the agriculture sector. Because our product is proudly Philippine made, it is easy to see the value of the field rice combined harvester. First, it is suitable to the local field condition. Its design and key features is appropriate for small paddy fields and irregularly shaped plots. Second, it is efficient because it can finish 2.5 hectares per day with labor requirement of only two persons. Lastly, it is economical at 950,000 pesos only per unit over the direct competitor, which retails at about 1.6 million. In addition, because the field rice mini rice combined harvester is locally made, spare parts are widely available in the local market, which enables the quick servicing maintenance, and repair of the machine. The mini rice combine harvester significantly reduces post-harvest losses and provides income opportunity to farmers, both coming from the recovered harvesting losses and the reduced harvesting cost. The technology will contribute towards modernization and industrialization of agriculture in the Philippines. It will also contribute to agricultural competitiveness through reduction of harvest and post-harvest losses and farmers' production costs. The eventual mass production of a proudly Philippine-made, durable and reliable mini rice combined harvester can spur the development and leveling up of our local farm machinery industry, which can bring about multiplier effects, such as jobs for semi-skilled and skilled workers in the agro-industrial manufacturing and the technical and support services sectors. Please take a photo of our contact details or scan the QR code linking to our Shopee page and Facebook pages. Drop us a message and we will gladly give you more information about the Philrest Mini Rice Combined Harvester as well as other technologies like the multipurpose seeder and the riding type transplanter. Thank you for your time and wishing you all better days ahead with Philrest Technologies by your side. Keep safe! Maraming salamat, Ms. Narvades. Hindi ulit magpapatalo ang MIRDC dahil meron din silang rice harvester attachment at ipapakilala ito sa atin Engineer Ray Mariposke. Engineer Mariposke is a mechanical engineer and is currently pursuing a master's degree in business administration. He is one of the technology licensing officers of MIRDC who handles the commercialization of trans and transfer of 
of MIRDC developed technologies such as food processing equipment, the RTA and RHA, and other machineries. Engineer Marie Poske will be presenting the technology of Engineer Isidro Di Milio, which is an efficient rice harvesting implement that can be readily mounted to and dismounted from the hand tractor unit, thus increases the utilization of hand tractor and helps reduce labor cost. It has an estimated capacity of 0 0.5 hectares per day for an eight-hour operation. Narito po ang kanyang presentation. Our technologies to forecast the weather had gone a long way in the recent decades. Thus, we are able to give warnings early on when typhoons are coming in our country. The Philippines received an average of 20 typhoons per year. In recent years, typhoons are getting stronger and more devastating, especially for our rice farmers when strong typhoons come just before the mature palay are ready to be harvested. So, in order to prevent too much losses, our rice farmers will race to harvest their crops before the typhoon strikes. But what can they do if most of them are racing to save their harvest and the skies are already darkening and the winds are picking up. This is a real grim scenario not only to the family of our rice farmers but with our government as well as we fear the loss of our rice supply. This is just one scenario. Our rice farmers are also aging. According to survey, the average age of our farmers is 57 years old. The process of manual harvesting and threshing will eventually take its toll to their aging bodies. Heat, long hours, and hard labor shuns farmers. Even members of their families prefer to work in cities, where the work environment is perceived to be more comfortable. The shortage of labor in some areas results to higher farm labor costs. Considering this, our government push to mechanize rice farming, particularly harvesting as there is a strong need to save farmers' hard-earned investment when calamity strikes and reduce labor costs. This is not an easy fit, as dedicated harvester and machineries, or what we call halimo, are extremely expensive. Most of our farmers own hand tractors that they utilize for land preparation and transportation. In order to help our rice farmers utilize this commonly used machine, the DOST MIRDC, in cooperation with Filmec, developed the Rice Harvester Attachment for Hand Tractor, also known as the RHA. The RHA is easily mounted and dismounted from the hand tractor using only common tools. Using the RHA in tandem with the hand tractor, with a 9 horsepower or 12 horsepower prime mover, cutting, howling, threshing, cleaning, and bagging are done in real time. The operation will require only one operator and one helper. Compared to the dedicated harvester, the RHA is considerably a lighter weight and easy to use transport. The smaller size makes it ideal for harvesting small size paddies or those that are difficult to access. The design conforms to the Philippine Agricultural Engineering Standards. Owning the RHA may also be an additional source of income for the farmers as they can service other farms or rent out the attachment. We are looking for fabricators to be our licensee of the technology, preferably those that are in the already engaged in agri-equipment fabrication. We will provide the design drawing, operations and maintenance manual, provide technical assistance and continuous promotion of the technology. As licensee of MIRDC Technologies, we provide discount on fees for the use of MIRDC machine shop, foundry, fabrication, and other testing facilities in order to help reduce cost in the initial production. Target markets are farmers cooperatives, farmers, and local government units. The DOST MIRDC designed the RHA with a Supplementary Rice Transplanter Attachment or the RTA, which we featured in a separate video. The RTA and, R and the RHA has undergone field testing. The design are registered as utility model and industrial design in the Intellectual Property Office of the Philippines. And now, 
we are inviting you to help us bring these technologies to the market. The RHA may not be able to surpass other dedicated harvesters available in the market in terms of harvesting capacity. But using the RHA with the hand tractors, our farmers would no longer need to manually harvest and thresh their palais, and their labor cost will be much lower. We commissioned a market study for the RHA with the farmers from Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. The results has been positive, particularly to farmers in Mindanao. Our study also showed that some farmers expressed willingness to pay up to 267,000 pesos for the RHA unit. I would like to tell you more about our technology. Please feel free to contact me, Engineer Rey and Mariposke, at these numbers. Just like the old saying, there is sunshine after the rain. Let us be a little ray of hope to our farmers. Be our licensee of the rice transplanter attachment for hand tractors. And that completes the five presentations under the RICE Farm Machinery session. To our WebEx host, pakilagay po sa spotlight si na Engineer Elmer Bautista, Engineer Gurney Milio, Ms. Chona Narvades, Engineer Joey Miano, Dr. Arnold Juliano, Engineer Joel Ramos, and Engineer Ray Mariposke. Sasagutin nila ang anumang paglilinaw o katanungan na magbubula sa ating mga participants sa WebEx Session Room and FB Live. Okay, umpisahan na po natin. Ito na po ang unang katanungan. Para kay uh, Engineer Elmer Bautista, uh, galing po ito sa WebEx uh, Session Room uh, kay Dr. Ronel Pangan, same ba ang land preparation prior to the use of the cedar? Parehas po ba ang land preparation? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Engineer Bautista, pakisagot po. Sagot po. Uh, yeah. Sir Noel, actually, sinagot ko na po doon sa chat. Uh, same lang po. Basta ma-meet po natin yung nakaprescribe doon sa requirement ng key check 2. Yung um, walang mataas, mababa na, na parte kapag tatapos ng ating land preparation. Hmm. Okay po. Uh, salamat, uh, Engineer Bautista. Sana po ay masihan si uh, uh, Dr. Pangan sa kanyang uh, narinig na kasagutan. At meron po pong pahabol si Dr. Pangan na tanong, ito naman po ay para kay Dr. Uh, kay Engineer uh, Gurley Milio ng MIRDC. Main hindrance in the use of transplanter is seedling preparation, which is very different from traditional way. Uh, my new method or suggestions na po ba regarding this? Pwede rin pong sumagot dito si Engineer Joey Mianyo dahil lang ito po ay tukol din sa transplanter. Nahin po muna natin uh, si Engineer Milio. Um, magandang umaga po. So yung regarding po dyan sa, sa seeding preparation, uh, Yung naging partner po kasi namin dito is uh, si Filmec uh, which uh, yung technology yung yung technique or yung technology po kung paano po yung mag-prepare ng uh, seedlings is uh, sa kanilang side po uh, kasi since amin po it's more on the machine itself and uh, uh, kung ano po yung uh, usual na uh, tinuturo po on how to prepare the the seedlings uh, yun din po yung nare-recommend namin Pero in in uh, a way po kung ano po yung kung meron pong bago I think uh si either si Phil Rice or si Phil Mac are in the position to give po ng feedback on this. Okay, uh, hinga natin ng uh, uh, kasagutan si Engineer Miano. Uh, paano po ba ito? Meron po ba talagang bagong uh, method or suggestion? Yes sir. Uh, good morning po sa lahat. Good morning po. Yes po. Uh, regarding po sa seedling preparation so uh, totoong uh, uh, hindrance siya dun sa acceptance ng ano ng mechanical transplanter uh, sa ngayon po ang field rice po ay nag uh, develop ng nag develop ng uh, method na yung dapog method para sa mechanical rice transplanting 
So ang uh, kaibang po sinong hindi na natin kailangan gumamit ng seedling trays. Kasi yung seedling trays, yung plastic tray sa isang hektarya, maabot na 250 to 300 uh, pieces ng seedling trays yung kailangan. Pero sa, sa dapog uh, type, dapog method po ng uh, seedling preparation, uh, hindi na po natin kailangan ng mga plastic trays po na yan. Okay, uh, meron pa bang idadagdag ang iba natin kasama? Kung wala na po. Uh, okay, uh, meron po tayong uh, katanungan galing sa FB Live. Uh, ito po ay galing kay Mama Imelda Lagarde. Farm mechanization program benefits to the land owner, farmer, but it displaces farm workers, laborers. Uh, they are composed majority of the population. They compose majority of the population in the rural barangays, which income have have lost due to farm machine utilization. Do we have technology uh, to displace workers in the farms? Uh, sino po sa ating mga kasama ang may uh, uh, gustong sumagot nitong uh, anong ni Mama Imelda Lagarde? Sir Noel, ako po. Sige po. Elmer po. Um, sa unang tingin po natin, medyo parang naka-displace ng, ng labor yung ating mechanization. Pero kung titingnan nyo po, pasyal po kayo doon sa mga barangays. Gaya na, nandito ako sa isang barangay, halos wala pong, hindi nyo po makikita yung ganong sitwasyon. Mag, uh, uh, halimbawa na lang po yung harvesting. Uh, dati ang harvesting natin mano-mano pero ngayon ay pumasok ang yung tinatawag nating halimaw yung combine harvester pero subukan nyo po ngayon dito sa amin na kumanap ng magagapas wala na po kayong makikita so I mean parang nag-evolve na rin po nag-develop yung ating mechanization ngayon kahit maghanap po kayo ng labor ngayon wala na po kayong makikita so ah uh, Personal uh, statement ko po, parang hindi ko nakikita yung displacement talaga, kundi yung mga labor natin ay uh, lumipat sila ng ibang trabaho other than uh, yung harvesting ngayon at uh, pumasok yung ating mechanization for uh, development of our uh, agricultural uh, operations. So, yun po, Sir Noel. Thank you. Salamat po. Um, salamat po, Sir. Uh, Merong similar na katanungan si Mr. Joseph Tadeo na nakasama natin dito sa Webex at uh, palagay ko uh, ito na rin yung uh, nasagot ni uh, engineer. Uh, pero babasahin ko na rin po. Ano po yung pananaw ninyo sa mga lugar na nawalan din ng trabaho dahil sa pagkakaroon ng mga bagong makinarya dahil na dito rin po nang gagaling yung kaninang kabuhayan? Salamat po at magandang umaga. Uh, Uh, Mr. Tadeo, sana po ay uh, nakasama sa nasagot ni uh, Engineer Miano yung inyong uh, katanungan. Ah, ni Engineer Bautista po pala. Sorry po. Uh, meron pa po tayo dito. Uh, Galing po kay uh, Ma'am Tercita Sanchez. Uh, kasama po natin sa FB Live. Good morning. I am watching from uh, Dores Farm, Mabitak, Laguna. I am an incubator. Of DOST Picard LSPU ATBI, Siniloan Laguna. I am just wondering if you could demonstrate in our rice field. Adores Farm is accredited by TESDA with the Rice Machinery Program NC2. Sino po sa ating mga resource persons ang uh, pwedeng makapagpaunlak sa kanyang invitasyon o sa kanyang request? Yeah, yung Sir Newell, uh, uh, mauna na po ako. Yung MPC there po ay willing po kami mag-demonstrate. Uh, communication lang po sa amin and then meron po kaming partner dyan sa UPLB yung uh, ito yung collaborative project kasi namin with UPLB uh, willing po namin i-demonstrate yung aming MPC there thank you uh, salamat po uh, meron pa po ba na gustong makipag uh, mag-demonstrate ng kanilang uh, technology sa farm ni uh, Ma'am Teresita Sanchez Bukod sa field rice. Okay, uh, kung uh, meron po kayong uh, 
gusto pang uh, makipag-collaborate kay Ma'am uh, Sanchez, um, paki makontakay na lang po namin kayo. Uh, Ma'am Sanchez, uh, pwede po namin kayong i-connect sa kanila kung meron pa po kayong ibang uh, gustong uh, magawa doon sa inyong uh, Adores Farm. Uh, meron din po tayo dito sa WebEx uh, from Batanes po. Richard Padayuman. Most of agri areas here are not utilized. So sa Batanes po ang sinasabi niya. Sana magkaroon din po tayo ng real type tractor to cultivate those sloppy areas. Sloppy areas to make them productive. Uh, sino po ang pwedeng makasagot dito? Meron po ba kayong uh, ginagawang uh, R&D para sa rail type tractor? Uh, MIRDC po muna. Uh, actually, sir, yung rail type is already in the pipeline na plans talaga ng MIRDC. Uh, kaso medyo na hold lang po dahil nag pumasok po si pandemic and uh, medyo, mahi medyo mahirap po kasi lalo na yung concerns namin on the field testing. Pero eventually, uh, yun po yung kinukonsider din ng MIRDC, yung rail type po. Uh, so, hindi naman you. po uh, applicable lang sa, sa mga sa specific na agri machinery. Pwede din naman po kasing i-apply yun sa iba pang equipment or machineries din po. Ah, okay po. Okay. Uh, sa parte naman po ng field rise, meron po ba kayong uh, ongoing R&D para sa rail type tractor? Arnold, ikaw na lang po. Good morning po. Hello po. Uh, sir, mga kasama. Yes po. Yeah, uh, actually, sa ngayon, meron kaming mga ongoing research. Uh, ito yung sa uh, gear transmission na power tiller na pwede sa rotobation or small small fields to, no? rotobation and uh, kahit sa transplanter, pwede mo siyang iatat, dissimilar doon sa ginawa ng one. Pero meron siyang pivot mechanism. So, smaller version nito na kung saan ay nasa pilot testing na kami. Tapos na yung aming endurance testing. Uh, kung mga Healy type kasi, dapat small small machines yan eh. Uh, yung mga ganong case. Uh, mahirap pag hindi, pag malaki kasi, like four-wheel tractor, may tendency kasing uh, gumulong yan. Very risky eh, sa mga ganong cases. Kaya small machines ang ina-advise namin. That's why we are developing, hindi kami umaalis sa mga small machines pa rin para masuportahan yung mga malit na farmers natin. Uh, yung isang technology namin na weeder, meron kaming isang weeder na ginagawa rin namin multi-function na pwede rin i-convert into a small tiller uh, to maximize the utilization ng grass cutter na pwede sa cleaning, pwede sa weeding, and later on sa tilling, yun yung parang attachment na lang. Yun yung mga opportunities but uh, wala pa yan sa market na sa development stage pa rin yan. Yun lang po. Thank you. Uh, salamat po, Dr. Juliano. Uh, marami pa tayong katanungan dito at uh, dumadami po ang interest natin. Uh, ito naman po galing kay uh, uh, Sir Gary Diopol. Magandang araw regarding sa mga machineries, particularly for MIRDC. Pwede ba pwede din bang i-avail ang machine and technologies presented sa DOST setup program? Meron po bang makakasagot dito sa mga kasama natin sa MIRDC? Uh, engineer uh, Ray. Uh, 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 yes, uh, ako sige po. Sir. Sige po. Ako, yung yung sa set up uh, yung, yung set up kasi it's more on upgrading ng facilities. So sa amin hindi naman necessarily na set up beneficiary ka to be our licensees. Uh, hmm. actually yung preferred namin is talagang yung gumagawa na ng mga agri equipment but uh, we are still open pa rin na mag-license ng technology to those na gustong mag-expand ng kanilang product line and to say for example you want to venture into uh, fabrication of agri machineries. Okay lang po yun sa amin na uh, i-license po kayo provided that uh, sana meron na kayong mga fabrication equipment or fabrication facility para hindi na po lalaki yung investment cost po ninyo. 
Mm, okay po. Ah, uh, yung uh, sige, tuloy na po natin dito. Uh, ito naman po ay uh, uh, galing ulit kay uh, Dr. Pangan, Ronel Pangan. Uh, yung harvester po ng MIRDC adaptable to any type po ng hand tractor. Ano po ang minimum uh, horsepower required? Yes, sir. Thank you po sa tanong, sir. No? So, para po dun sa dalawang ano po, sa dalawang equipment po for transplanter and um harvester po, yung ideal po is around um 9 horsepower po to accommodate po yung dalawa na horsepower po para po pwede po natin gamitin yung rice transplanter for transplanting saka po harvesting po for ano for the rice harvester. Yan po, yun po minimum required power po natin. Mm, okay po. Hey, ah uh... Mula naman po uh, kay Ma'am Ana Sagana, uh, which of the machines are already commercially available? Ano po ang process ng adoption by our local manufacturers? Sino po ang uh, makakasagot nito? Uh, pwede po uh, sumagot yung uh, mula sa field rice muna. Apa, si, apa, MPC there po. Uh, Ma'am, yung MPC there po namin ay uh, readily available na. Merong mga manufacturers po kami at this time. May five manufacturers kami na malapit na po yung, uh, uh, yung final process noong ating uh, Fairness Opinion Board. Isa na po yung nakapasa sa Region 2 and then uh, coming yung apat na manufacturer. So, kung titingnan natin yung situation, ay ready na yung manufacturer and uh, commercialize, uh, for commercialization na po yung unit. Yung multi-purpose feeder po. Thank you, Sir Noel. Hello po. Thank you po. Dinig ako, Sir Noel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Arnold. Uh, dalawa yung concern ko sa riding transplanter saka sa combined harvester. Yung Riding transplanter nasa manufacturers na yan. So yung pilot test units namin, gawa na ng manufacturers. After the pilot testing, may lilipat na namin sa commercialization. So malapit na siya, konting push na lang. So yun lang po ang kulang nun. Uh, mapagamit na natin sa mga farmers natin. And then the final one ay ito yung ipaproduce na ng ating local manufacturers. Meron na tayong local manufacturers in Laguna. But for combined harvester, uh, we have uh, three manufacturers nationwide. Uh, nauna dyan ang, ang Mindanao, ano? sa, sa Dabao, Dabao Beta Spring, na meron na silang unit and they have units for pilot testing na. So hopefully this year uh, matapos yung pilot testing and by next year ay nasa commercial station stage na rin. We have also manufacturer in Laguna na ngayon ay matatapos na rin yung unit and ready for testing. So yun po yung status ng dalawang machines natin sa field rice. Thank you. Okay pa, narita ko sa kwan. Okay po. Uh, sa MIRDC po ba? Meron po ba kayong uh, pasagutan dun sa tanong? Alin daw po yung commercially available na? Sa for MIRDC po, yung dalawang technology po, rice transplanter at rice harvester po, commercially available na po siya. For rice transplanter po, meron po tayong apat. Isa po sa Bataan, isa po sa Bulacan, isa rin po sa NCR, tsaka po isa po sa Iligan. Or sa Harvester naman po, meron po tayong tatlo, maliban lang po dun sa Bataan. So available po siya sa NCR, Bulacan, tsaka po sa Iligan, sa Mindanao po. Ayan po. For dun po sa mga interesado magpa-license po sa mga ating ng technology, um, pwede nyo po kami kontakin, nasaan po ta, sa mga email addresses po natin. At iga-guide po namin kayo para po maging licensee po namin kayo. Salamat po. Uh, salamat, uh, Engineer. Um, yung tanong po ni uh, uh, Galing sa FB Live uh, from Ompok Tunyakaw, Donel, uh, nasagot na po uh, ni, uh, ng Phil Rice kanina yung how to avail multipurpose seeder. Uh, kasi nga daw po ang sinabi ni ng nagtanong sa atin, Kasi po dito sa amin, mano-mano pa din yung gamit ng mga corn farmers from Pasaan, Misamis, or Oriental. So, meron na po silang mga licensed manufacturers. I think meron na rin sila sa Mindanang. So, uh, pwede po kung mag-direcho sa Pilrice. Ito, dito na nakukipangayos sa Kwan. 
sa balubal ba? Sa gabatong tulay ba? Nang nutana ko sa kwan kung nasa uh, uh, okay. uh, nga, may tanong nga, po dito. Lang? Sino po kaya no, makakasagot? Kay uh, galing po kay uh, Ma'am Inday Badiday uh, sa FB Live. Hello yeah. po. Okay po ba ang drum seeder po? Sino po ba ang mak pwede makasagot dito? Yes po. Uh, pwede nga po ako sumagot. Yes sir. Yes, sir. Uh, okay po ang ito yung plastic drum seeders natin sa Peel Rice. Uh, nationwide po yan na na-promote na. May mga farmers na tayo, group of farmers, na ginagamit yan. Like in Sambales, uh, kinocustom service nga nila yan ng 1,000 per hectare. But you, if you will buy the drum seeder, nasa 8 to 10,000 lang yan. Para bang meron ka lang 10 hectares, nabawi mo na yung investment mo. So yun po yun. Uh, Inroad din po yun na ang kanyang capacity, kaya niya ang isa hanggang dalawa hektarya sa maghapon. Ba, pero hindi kakayanin na isang tao, dapat dalawa sila na magsasalit para hindi po mahirapan. Ang seeding rate niya nasa 20 kilograms to 60 kilograms per hectare. Yun po, meron po tayo. Nasa market na po yan. Noel, nakamit kayo. Para po kay Ma'am Chona Narvadez. Uh, you mentioned about Shopee in the last slide of your presentation. Does this mean uh, the rice combine harvester is available nationwide and can be bought through Shopee via, via shipping? So good morning po sa lahat. Um, that's actually a great idea, but the right now the platform has certain limit limitations. So what we have on Shopee are our nutrient management tools like the leaf color chart and the minus one element technique kit, some publications and some souvenirs. So please share these touch points to your network because we have to be innovative on how we can best deliver information. So the message is that you can reach us, you can find us online anytime. Uh, wow. We are just a chat away. So follow and like us on Facebook at Phil Rice Products and on Shopee. Um, look for Phil Rice TV. Morning po. Thank you. Uh, salamat po sa clarification at sa kasagutan, uh, Ms. Uh, Narvades. Uh, galing naman po sa ating uh, WebEx session room, uh, Ma'am Valerie Poro. Good day po. Tanong ko lang po regarding sa rice transplanter. Adjustable po ba siya pagdating sa planting distance na po? Adjustable po ba? Yes po. Sino po pwede makasagot? Uh, ito na po yung ating second to the last question kasi uh, yeah. marami na po tayong na-accommodate. Sige po, sir. Sa, sa, sa atin, sa riding transplanter, naya-adjust siya. Yung isa ay 15 centimeter yung heel spacing niya. At pwedeng i-adjust into 13 to 12 uh, centimeter yung mas closer. But for the raw, yung raw niya ay uh, fix siya na 30 centimeter. So kung gusto mong mas masinsin noong farmer, pwede siyang i-adjust into a closer one. Yun po. Thank you. Salamat po. Salamat po sa kasagutan na yan. Uh, ito na po muna ang ating huling katanungan para sa session na ito. Uh, galing sa FB Live, uh, Mr. Paolo Martinez. Any small machinery available for farm agricultural ditching and plowing, especially for hard soil under local manufacturers? Um, sino po ang pwede makasagot dito, sir? Wala po tayong na-mention na uh, uh, presenter. Uh, sa FieldRise po ba o sa MIRDC, meron po pwede makasagot? Ulitin ko po yung tanong, any small machinery available for farm agricultural ditching and plowing, especially for hard soil under local manufacturers? 
Uh, sir, sa MIRDC po, wala pa po kaming ganong technology sa ngayon. Okay, thank, thank you po, uh, Engineer Milio. Sa field rice po kaya? Uh, sir, may sagot ka ba? O oh, mauna na ako? <clears throat> Ikaw muna, Pag. Uh, yung pong sinasabi ko kaninang uh, gear transmission power tiller, may pivot mechanism yon. Ang attachment niya, pwede kang maglagay ng ro small rotobator for dry. Pwede sa dry rotobation, pwede rin sa wet. And then, yung others ay haro, uh, leveler, and pwede ring transplanter, pwede ring weeder. So, attachment. So, may pivot mechanism. Yun po yung, hopefully, matapos namin yung endurance testing sa transplanting this this year. At uh, i-pilot test na rin namin. Thank you. Okay po. Uh, ano, uh, ito na po yung, yung last talaga. Kasi maganda po yung tanong na. Uh, ito po bang mga machines na, na i-present natin ay... Uh, Amtec tested. Uh, umamarapatin po ng ating mga ano, ng ating mga resource persons. Ako na po ang sasagot. Uh, yes po, uh, mga machine tested na po yung mga present na machineries kanina kasi po uh, sumusunod ang ating mga researchers dun sa uh, layunin ng uh, uh, batas uh, on farm mechanization na bago ipagbili o i-offer ay kailangan Amtec tested certified ang mga farm machineries. At yun po ang ating uh, pagtatapos ng uh, unang session sa araw na ito. Sana tulad ko ay marami kayong natutunan. <coughs> and so ladies and gentlemen, uh, we are now moving on to the next session on farm machineries. Uh, salamat po sa mga nauna nating resource persons. Thank you po. Ipapakilala sa atin ng una oh, natin presenter para sa ah, session na ito, uh, ang Adlai milling machine. Engineer Samuel Barot is a science research analyst of uh, DA Cagayan Valley Research Center or DA CVRC in Ilagan, Isabela. Uh, Dando na po siya since 2010. He will present the Adlai milling machine technology uh, which can be operated using electric motor or gasoline engine. Both models weigh 75 to 85 kilograms and can be carried by two to three persons. It can produce whole grain, uh, grits in different sizes, and bran for livestock. It can also mill rice, corn, soybean, mung bean, and pigeon pea. Narito po ang uh, presentation ni Engineer Baro. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat, especially sa mga kasamahan natin sa agricultural machinery manufacturing sector. I am Samuel B. Barut Jr. of DA Arak Otu, Cagayan Valley Research Center, and I will be talking about the technology Adlai milling machine. First, what is Adlai? Adlai is a cereal crop with a high potential as an alternative staple food and additional source of income. This crop was first introduced to farmers last year, 2011. However, when farmers, especially in mountainous farming communities, harvested their crops, there are no available and suitable milling machines for Adlai. Some farmers use mortar and pestle, a traditional grain milling tool, but as have been documented, it is a laborious, time-consuming, low productivity and low grade quality milling method. Some farmers become hesitant while others stop growing adlai due to this. But the Department of Agriculture bought back farmers' harvest to sustain farmers' production as well as to augment available seeds for distribution, promotion, and product development activities by the department. With the funding by the DA Bureau of Agricultural Research, the DA Cagayan Valley Research Center has re-engineered a commercial rice micro mill into an adlai milling machine. The processing equipment is capable of producing polished to unpolished adlai grits with high milling efficiency, recovery, and grits purity. Compact and portable, it is very suitable to mountainous farming communities. The adlai milling machine comes with two models. The first model is powered by a three horsepower electric motor, while the second model is driven by a 6.5 horsepower gasoline engine. 
for the machine performance, it has an output capacity of 51 to 78 kilograms per hour, milling efficiency of 41 to 60%, milling recovery of 97 to 100%, and output product purity of 96 to 99.9%. .9%. It weighs 75 kilograms in average with 10 kilograms hopper capacity, built with radial centrifugal suction blower, sturdy angular bar frame, semi-gloss green finish with belt safety cover and installed with four pieces, four inches transport wheels. The equipment requires only one man power as operator, low maintenance cost, easy to service, low operation cost and versatile, which can also mill rice and corn, crack soybean, mung bean and pig and pea. It's already 11 years since Adlai was introduced to farmers. In order to sustain production and promotion of the crop, DA served as initial market by the farmers since year 2012. Year 2013 to 2014 is the development of the Adlai milling machine, including its untech testing and IPR application, and soon the prototype Adlai milling machine. Prior to the national pilot testing of the machine, the Timely Tech Enterprises, formerly Science Marketing Development Incorporated, as partner manufacturer, was already scouted and accredited who produced the 10 units Adlai milling machines, pilot tested to major Adlai production areas in the country. The performance of the Adlai milling machines has led to the development of the final machine design for mass production. And according to the manufacturer, as of mid-year of 2018, more than 50 units were sold to the Department of Agriculture and private sectors and are now being enjoyed by our Adlai farmers nationwide. The impacts of the availability of the Adlai milling machine have led to its recognition during the 30th DA Bar Symposium last November 2018, wherein it garnered a silver award and a project grant as a prize. Market of Adlai milling machine includes individual Adlai farmers, Adlai farmers groups, organizations, cooperatives, non-Adlai farmers or non-farmers who want to venture through service provider, poultry feed millers or aggregate suppliers, livestock racers, and food processors. The technology is still wide open to fabricators who are interested in manufacturing the technology or the machine. As soon as the technology is transferred to the licensee, the latter may now start mass production, marketing, and conduct service after sales. Being the technology owner, the DA RF Auto CBRC will extend technical assistance to the licensee and will also serve as marketing or promotion partner to further enhance the adoption of the technology for Adlai. And moreover, this technology requires no sophisticated equipment in order to manufacture. With regard to financial aspect, on the side of the technology licensee, the total equipment cost after remodeling works is 57,000 pesos. And considering a 20% markup, the selling price per unit is around 68,400 pesos. On the other side, if it used for custom hiring business at 96 centavos operation cost per kilogram output and considering a 2 pesos and 50 centavos milling cost or milling fee, a 1 peso and 50 centavos net income per kilogram output can be derived by the machine owner or operator. With that, the Adlai milling machine is suitable for household and profitable for custom hiring use. The team members behind the success of this technology Ms. Rosemary Giacchino, Regional Technical Director and Adlai TWG member, Mr. Rolando De Pedro, Agricultural Center Chief 3 and the advisor, Mr. Roy Nicuayaquino, Senior Science Research Specialist and the project leader, and just truly Samuel Dibar Jr., Science Research Analyst. That's partner in making Adlai as an industry, be a technology licensee. For more details, please uh, reach us out through the given information below. And thank you and God bless us all.
Maraming salamat, Engineer Barut, at sa inyong Adlai Milling Machine. Ang susunod na mampung technology ay ang Greenhouse Solar Dryer for Food Grade Cassava. Ang ating presenter ay si Dr. Romualdo Martinez, a Chief Science Research Specialist of the Philippine Center for Post-Harvest Development and Mechanization, o PhilMec. He has been with PhilMec since 1985. The greenhouse solar dryer uses solar energy to heat the dryer and, its, and for its electricity requirements in order to minimize operating costs. It is made of food grade materials and protects the cassava from insects, birds and animals, as well as dust and other contaminants. It is also designed to utilize biomass energy for heating the dryer during prolonged rainy periods in order to maintain good quality dried cassava. Tunghayan po natin ang presentation ni Dr. Martinez. Good morning. My name is Romualdo Martinez from the Department of Agriculture, Philippine Center for Post-Harvest Development and Mechanization. We have developed a greenhouse solar dryer that will enable effective drying of agricultural crops and products, even during prolonged rainy periods. Farmers, processors, and agri-entrepreneurs have problems properly drying their products, especially when sun drying is not possible. High moisture products deteriorate rapidly if not immediately dried, resulting to spoilage, poor quality, low price, and even market rejection. There are alternative mechanical dryers available in the market, but these are expensive to acquire and operate because they extensively use electricity and fossil fuel. Moreover, research have shown that sun drying, if done properly, results to product of very good quality. Our dryer solution is a greenhouse-like enclosed structure made of high quality polycarbonate sheets that maximizes solar energy capture and retention. The drying trays are made of food grade materials. Biomass furnace and heat exchangers provide heat during rainy periods. Solar powered fans circulate the drying air. Solar cell panels and storage batteries power the fans and other components of the dryer. What are the benefits? 20 degrees higher drying temperature, 40% shorter drying duration. The furnace ensures no delay in drying, avoiding spoilage. Products are protected from rain and contamination, and the dryer can be set up off electricity grid. So what is our ask? We seek grant funding for drying facility support amounting to around 1.75 million per dryer. Set up community drying centers, demonstrate capabilities and benefits, and develop sustainability models in cooperation with LGUs. The dryers will be fabricated and installed by licensed manufacturers. Filmec will collaborate with LGUs to set up the drying support. The dryer will be managed by cooperatives who do not have initial capital to invest on the dryer. They will perform collective drying and marketing of farmers produce. Year round, they will be drying multiple products to maximize utilization. Filmec will provide training, coaching, and mentoring on the operation and business development to ensure sustainability. Our first prototype was developed and tested for drying fermented cacao beans. Because of the dryer, our cooperator in Davao was able to secure long-term contract to export their beans with a Singapore-based consolidator. Our second set of prototypes was for drying coffee. Because of the dryer, our cooperator in Laguna 
was able to produce high quality roasted beans. Our third set of prototypes was tested for drying processed cassava products. The dryer enabled our cooperator in Sabuanga to double their production capacity of processed cassava chip food snack. We are currently testing our final pre-commercialization prototype. We set up the dryer in a women-led cooperative in Tarlac, drying cornix or chichacorn. So let's partner and set up more greenhouse solar dryers in rural communities. With your support, we can really help the Filipino farmers. Thank you. Maraming salamat, Dr. Martinez. Sana ay maraming mag magtatanim at processor ng balinghoy ang makinabang sa iyong dryer. Sunod ko naman pong ipapakilala ay ang Filmec Compact Corn Mill at ang kanyang inventor. Si Dr. Michael Gragasin ay isang scientist one ng uh, Filmec. He has been with Filmec since 1991. The compact corn mill technology is a compact yet powerful corn mill with a capacity of 300 kilograms per hour, which is ideal for village level operation. The design can be powered by both single phase electric motor or a 12 horsepower diesel engine. Its technical performance and its specifications fully conform to the Philippine Agricultural Engineering Standard for corn mill. Narito po ang presentation ni Dr. Michael Gragasin. Isang liktas, mapayapa at mapagpalang araw sa inyong lahat. It is indeed a great privilege to introduce to you the Filmec Compact Corn Mill, a solution to the farmers' corn drilling problem in the countryside. I'm Dr. Michael Grugasin, one of the inventors of this technology at Filmec. Perhaps you may ask, why do we need to develop a new type of corn meal in the Philippines? The answer is, there is a huge demand for modern corn meal in our country for the production of white corn grits for human consumption. The stable food of 15 million Filipinos, mostly living in the Visayas and Mindanao areas. And secondly, corn meal is needed in the production of high grade yellow corn wheat for poultry farms. The problem is one of the agricultural machines that has been neglected in our country is the corn meal. Why? First, the total corn meal that we feed in the Philippines is estimated by the Department of Agriculture at 4,500 units of 400 kilograms per hour capacity. Second, we still use an antiquated design, which is peasant type corn meal, a more than 50 year old technology with high operating cost. Third, Corn meal machine is so expensive. This is the price list of a leading manufacturer of corn meal in the Philippines. The cost of a 300 to 350 kilogram per hour capacity corn meal machine is 675,000 pesos and it uses a huge diesel engine of 18 to 20 horsepower. The limited inefficient an expensive corn meal in our country have resulted to a strong and high rental practice in the corn meal industry. To underscore this point, the corn meal industry charges milling fee based on input and not on output. Unlike the rice milling industry, what is the implication of this? The corn operator does not care about what happened to the corn after milling. Whether it produces good quality corn wheat at high at higher milling recovery. Next, the milling fee is expensive, two to three pesos per kilogram input. 
So this is equivalent to three tenths of 475 pesos per kilogram output, which is twice the million fee for rice meal at 175 to 50 pesos per kilogram per kilogram. Our solution to this problem is to develop a technically feasible, financially viable, social, economically acceptable, and commercially available delayed compact corn meal. What we did is to innovate the determinator mechanism to improve the quality of corn grades. Second, to innovate the grinding mechanism of the corn meal to improve the quantity of the corn grits to be produced. Third, we innovate the sitter to significantly reduce the power requirement of the machine. And most importantly, to ensure that all parts are readily available in the country. After four years of intensive design and development, testing and evaluation, the AMTEC test result is in 215 showed that the newly developed corn meal technology has an output recovery of 72.3% and the germinator efficiency of 81.2%. Both have fully satisfied the minimum technical specification set by the Philippine Agricultural Engineering Standard for corn meal. The AMTEC of UPLD is the only duly authorized testing center in the country for agricultural machines. Based on the performance of the corn meal, the estimated cost of producing one kilogram of corn wheat is 1.04 pesos or 67 centavos if based on input. This is far below the prevailing milling fee in the country of 2 to 3 pesos per kilogram input basis. Suppose that the developed corn meal will be used for custom milling business and will charge a milling fee of 2 pesos per kilogram output, not into place. The net revenue is about 96 levels mm -hmm. per kilogram. Based on this, the estimated IRR for a total investment of 570,000 pesos is 68.6% .6 with net present value of 1.4 million pesos. The new compact corn wheel system has two pending patent application of the Philippine ITO, the Filmec compact corn wheel system and the pre cleaner for corn. In our commercialization scheme, the Filmec grants license to local manufacturers that signify interest to fabricate, distribute, and sell the technology and fully comply to the terms and conditions of Filmec. To date, and while there are already more than 400 units sold in the market by our licensed local manufacturers, the opportunity of this technology is huge to fill the estimated 4,500 units for new deficit all over the country. This technology is highly recommended by the corn program of the Department of Agriculture because of its technical performance and efficiency. In behalf of our team, Ms. JD and Dr. Romy, maraming salamat sa inyong lahat for the privilege to, to present to you the Filmec Compact Technology, the solution to the farmers' corn milling problem in the countryside. Maraming pong salamat at mabuhay ang sambayan ng Pilipinas. Maraming salamat po, uh, Dr. Gagasin. Ngayon po ay uumpisahan na natin ang pagsagot sa mga katanungan ng ating mga kasama sa WebEx at FB Live. Uh, sa ating po WebEx host, uh, pakilagay po sa spotlight si Engineer Barut. Siya po muna ang ilagay natin sa spotlight. At uh, marami po ang nagpakita ng interes. Uh, sa kanya po muna natin i-focus ang ating spotlight. Uh, Engineer Barut, ang una pong tanong ay galing sa uh, kasama natin na sa FB Live na si uh, um, Ma'am Nida Gigayon. May we know po 
who is your accredited manufacturer fabricator in Mindanao? Okay, uh, to answer the question po, kung may available po ba na fabricator sa Mindanao, uh, as of now po, isa pa lamang po yung uh, accredited na manufacturer natin, naka-based po siya sa Quezon City, but they have branch in Mindanao, uh, I think it's in Coronadal City, uh, which uh, they have available milling machines there, uh, ready to be shipped anywhere in Mindanao. Uh, yun po yung SMDI or Science Marketing Development Incorporated, pero ang uh, pangalan na po ng company ngayon is uh, Time to Tech Enterprises. Uh, I can post here later the contact number of the uh, company where you can buy the Adlai milling machine. And uh, you can also search on Facebook the company name. It's, uh, I think, uh, Time to Tech Enterprises or Purima. You can uh, message them on Facebook uh, regarding the Adlai milling machine uh, wherein they, uh, they have posted their uh, products, machineries, in the uh, online uh, platform. Yun lamang po. Okay. Uh... Salamat po. At um, meron naman pong uh, galing sa FB Live ulit uh, kay Ma'am Agripina Aradilla. Ito po, uh, dalawang magkasunod po itong katanungan. Uh, kumusta po, Engineer Barot? We have one adline machine bought in 2016 in General Santos City. So distributor in Mindanao before. May problem po ngayon sa screen niya. Any recommendation? Tapos may, may kasunod po po ito. Maliban sa screen ng adlay machine namin sa CMU, problema din po ang mga bearings, hindi daw ma-detach. Saka ang haller din po problema. Uh, please recommend where to have this uh, repaired. Uh, Junior Barot, uh, may kasagutan po ba tayo? Okay po, uh, sa first question po regarding po sa concave screen, uh, kung sira na po yung concave screen, yun po yung nagsasabi uh, na highly utilized po yung machine natin, uh, which is, uh, that, that is the wear and tear. So, nagagasgas po yung screen, nabubutasan. So, may sumasamang adline na sa uh, brand niya. Uh, mayroon po tayong available na spare parts from the company. Uh, yung mga screen po niya, saka sa ibang parts. Then, regarding naman po sa bearings niya, yung pillow block bearing is uh, secured with... Uh, bolts and uh, some stiffener uh, part para po mas uh, rigid po yung structure. Unless uh, uh, may winelding na po yung mga gumamit kasi I think matagal na po talagang nagagamit yung adlay milling machine natin sa CMU. Uh, and, uh, I think I will just uh, contact Ma'am uh, Gripina Aradilla. I have her contact number since uh, year 2016. The first time they bought the adlay milling machine and I will personally assist uh, them on their uh, uh, problem on the machine. Uh, salamat po, uh, Engineer Barut. Uh, napakagad na kasagutan at uh, asahan po natin na makikipag-coordinate kay, uh, kay Ma'am. Uh, lipat naman po tayo. Uh, ilagay natin sa spotlight si uh, Dr. Martinez ng Filmec. Meron po dito ang dalawang katanungan. Ang una po ay galing sa WebEx uh, kay Mr. Philip Ong nagbula. To Dr. Martinez, what is the number of trays, trays, and how min, how much tonnage of cassava can be dried in your solar dryer? Uh, salamat po sa katanungan. Ang total number of trays po namin ay 65. At ang isa pong tray ay kakarga ng 15 kilos. So around 1,000 kilos of processed cassava po ang kanyang, kayang ikarga. Okay po. Uh, salamat po, sir. Ang sunod pong tanong ay, uh, sir, do you have prototype of solar dryer for seaweeds? Or the prototype you presented can also, can also be used? Thank you po from WebEx Ren, Rennet. Uh, maraming salamat po sa katanungan. Yung pong aming pinakita na dinevelop na dryer ay multi-commodity dryer. So anything po na pwedeng tuyuin sa araw ay kaya po itong tuyuin ng aming dryer in a more efficient way. Kasi nga po kahit umuulan ng tuloy-tuloy ay pwede pong gamitin itong dryer na ito. Marami pong salamat. Okay, uh, salamat po Dr. Martinez. Uh, Lagay naman po natin si Dr. Dragasin sa spotlight. Meron po mga tanong dito. Ang isa po ay uh, 
Uh, related dun sa unang tinanong kanina, uh, uh, how to avail compact corn meal? Kasi po dito sa amin, mano-mano pa din yung gamit ng mga corn farmers namin dito from Hasaan, Misamis Oriental. Uh, galing po FB Live dito, uh, ay uh, Sir Mpok, Tunyakao Donel. Okay, uh, bago sa lahat na well, yung video na na-play, ito yung graph, hindi ito yung final, kaya hindi maganda. Uh, but anyway, uh, yung sa katanungan ay uh, uh, available na yung ating filmic compact corn meal sa market. But, uh, kino-commercialize na ito ng, o inadapt ito ng Department of Agriculture. At uh, you, can, uh, you can access that. Uh, marami tayong mga local manufacturers na accredited ng filmic para mag-inda uh, ng ating filmic. So, just contact yung ating credited local manufacturer from the Fondi Fire Company. Thank you po, uh, Doc Mike. Uh, sir, uh, may next question po tayo dito. Pakilapit lang po yung inyong uh, uh, microphone. Uh, ito po yung tanong. Regarding po sa village type from corn meal, may mga na-distribute tayo under DA corn program from 2014 to 2017, which required three-phase electrical capacity. Sad to say, majority here in Negros Oriental experienced difficulty, especially in availability of parts when damaged and need to be replaced. How can we address these concerns to fully utilize those non-functional units? Further, is it possible to have fuel drive corn meal? Galing po ito sa WebEx, Ma'am Fe, Filosofo. Uh, Doc Mike? Okay. Maraming salamat dun sa inyong katanungan. Actually, yung ating uh, Filmex Compact Corn Meal ay uh, uh, electric driven, single phase siya. Okay, yung ating design uh, ng Filmex, single phase, compatible sa single phase electrical line. At uh, meron na rin tayong upgraded model, ito yung engine driven. Kailang, uh, nung lumabas kasi ito, uh, dahil ang nire-require ng DA ay uh, uh, filmic design, maraming mga nag-bid, gustong mag-bid, na nag-claim na yung corn mill nila ay filmic design. So that's the problem. Uh, pero yung, uh, I would like to take this opportunity to clarify na yung ating filmic compact corn meal ay yung design natin ay compatible sa single phase. Okay? This is driven by a single phase electric motor or a engine driven. Uh, okay, sir. Thank you po. Um, meron pa pong isa. Uh, with regards to corn meal, Galing po ito kay uh, uh, Sir Jose de Ramos sa WebEx Session Room. What are the grit sizes of the milled products and the percentages of the grit sizes? What is the total power requirement? Yun po, uh, Sir Mike? Okay. Uh, yung ating design ngayon ay... Uh, apat yung labasan ng corn meal. Meron sa corn flour, meron uh, sa yung mas maliit, ito yung grade 18 hanggang uh, 16, and then meron yung grade uh, 10 to 14, and then yung mas malaki sa grade number 10. Ngayon, uh, may mga consumers kasi na gusto nila yung medyo mas malaki, so kaya naglagay din kami ng grade greater than 10 na outlet. Pero kung gusto nyo ng mas maliit, then uh, pwede nyo lang i-return yung grip number 10 doon sa isang hopper para mas mapaliit yung mga corn grip sizes. Okay? So, ganun yung design niya. At uh, ang uh, corn meal na to ay pinapatakbo ng dalawang 5 horsepower electric motor. Dalawang 5 horsepower electric so, para pwede natin maikabit sa isang single phase electric, electrical line. Okay po, sir. Uh, uh, sir, ito ay ano, uh, galing po kay uh, sa Bafe, 
uh, Ma'am Desiree Salvatera. Uh, regarding the cornmeal, what is the expected useful life? And are the materials used for the fabrication locally available? Um, sir, bago nyo sagutin, um, uh, Engineer Barot, ganun din po ang katanungan ni Ma'am Salvatera tungkol po sa adlay milling machine. Uh, sasagutin muna po ni uh, Doc Mike yung tanong. Sir, sige po. Okay, uh, actually over design yung ating cornmeal, kaya napakabigat. <laughs> Matindi yung mga bakal na pinaglalagay dyan. Ang madaling, ma ang replaceable lang dyan, kagaya ng mga common uh, milling system, yung mga screen. Okay. Pero yung screen na yan, uh, when we develop the uh, cornmeal, uh, we ensure that all parts are, are available in the market. So, uh, ilang naman, at uh, yung life span ng uh, cornmeal, expecting na abot yan ng 10 years. Ngayon, yung mga replaceable parts, ito yung uh, depende dun sa number of hours na gagamitin. Thank you. Hello, Sir Noel. Ako na po ba yung sasagot? Uh, okay. Uh, balikan po natin si Engineer Barut. Uh, sir, uh, pakilagay po sa spotlight si uh, uh, Sir Engineer Barut. Uh, ano daw po ang uh, expected useful life ng machine at ang materials po ba uh, for fabrication ay locally available? Okay po, uh, to Ma'am Desiree Salvatare, uh, Salvatera of uh, Bafe, yung adlay milling, po, milling machine po natin is uh, estimated po of five years economic life if the equipment is highly utilized po. And the base unit of the machine is not uh, locally fabricated or uh, we only re-engineered it for it to meet the characteristics of adlay in milling process. Other materials aside from the steel hauler and its casing uh, locally available na po yung mga iba. Though yung uh, base unit natin, yung steel hauler, is uh, commercially available naman na po dito sa Pilipinas. Uh, yung case po kasi ng adlay, uh, since uh, newly introduced crop po ito sa mga farmers natin, nagpatanim po tayo ng nagpatanim, then nagharvest sila, wala po silang milling machine na available po sa farming communities nila. So to address po yung uh, nag-come up po na problem, so instead of uh, inventing uh, machines, uh, may mga available naman na, na re-engineer lang natin. So, yun po yung nangyari sa adlay milling machine. We, re we only re-engineered it for, me for it to meet the uh, milling uh, demand of adlay. So, pero wala naman po problema sa uh, availability ng base unit na ginamit namin. Available po commercially dito sa Pilipinas. Okay, uh, thank you po. Um... Sir, wala itong kinalaman sa machine, kaya lang may nagtanong po sa Webex, uh, si Ma'am LV. Uh, to DA, where can we source adlai seeds for planting? We want to introduce it to our partner IP communities in Sambales, Batang, and Coron. Uh, masasagot po ba natin ito, Engineer Barut? Okay, I think yung location ni Ma'am is uh, on Region 4A, kung hindi po ako nagkakamali. So, sa DA Region 4A po sa Batangas, uh, meron po tayong uh, uh, adlay seed production po doon. Uh, they can source uh, their seeds so po sa station na yun. And if ever po na wala pong available, meron po tayong available na seeds po dito sa re uh, Region 2 na pwede po namin i-share po sa Region 4A at saka sa ibang region po. Okay, uh... Meron din pong nagtanong, um, siguro may sumagot na rin naman po sa ating WebEx chat box. Ito ay uh, kung saan daw makakabili ng adlay na ready to cook. Uh, um, ang isa pong sagot dito ay meron din daw po nitong available sa, sa SM, mga SM, at uh, meron daw po nito sa... Uh, Ano pa sa DA? Okay po. Uh, balikan po natin si ano si uh, Dr. Martinez. Uh, 
Okay, highlight po si Dr. Martinez para masagot niya ng uh, ito pong tanong na ito from uh, uh, Alden Arellano. Uh, kasama natin sa WebEx. Na-test na po ba ang solar dryer sa malakas na hangin o bagyo? Salamat po. Uh, salamat po sa tanong. Uh, wala po kaming specific na test na uh, for yung typhoon resilience niya. Uh, pero yung isa po namin set up sa Isabela, sa Nagilian Isabela for drying of cassava, na naka-experience na po ng ilang typhoon uh, happenings ay buo pa po, nandun pa po and operating. So, we believe that the, the, the structure is uh, good enough for for our typhoon condition for the last three years. Okay, sir. Uh, tungkol din ito sa inyong uh, dryer, magkana po ba ang cost ng isang setup ng solar dryer? Thank you po sa kasagutan. Galing po ito kay Amzi sa WebEx Session Room. Yung pong aming current prototype na food grade at uh, gumagamit ng all stainless steel material for its... Uh, uh, tables and cabinets uh, na ang kanyang capacity ay 1 ton ay ang commercial price po niya is around 1.5 million 1.5 so kung titingnan baka nakakagulat pero based po dun sa amin po mga feasibility study financial calculations ay kung ito po ay magagamit year round using high value products ay madali pong mababawi yung investment. Salamat po uh, Dr. Martinez. Uh, meron po dito, ito na po yung ating uh, huling katanungan para sa session na ito. Galing po ito kay Ma'am Agrippina Aradilla sa FB Live. Uh, nagpasabali po siya. Ito po yon. Sorry for this. This question might be out of context. Pero relative to parboiling of adlay, may machine po ba ang field rice na pwedeng magamit for dry run to produce parboiled adlay? Thanks po. Uh, sino po kaya ang pwede makasagot dito? Uh, uh, Engineer Barut, um, mayroon po ba tayong pwedeng isagot kay ma'am? Uh, as of now, wala pa po tayong na-develop na technology sa power boiling ng adlay here in uh, DAR Photo. Then sa PLRISE po siguro, baka mayroon po salaga silang uh, equipment or technology for that uh, specific matter po. Sir. Okay. Um, Ma'am uh, Aradilla, ang question niyo po ay uh, ito forward namin sa uh, PLRISE um, para po mabigyan kayo ng kasagutan. Uh, Kung wala na po tayong uh, uh, tanong na naiiwan buhat sa ating uh, WebEx at saka FB Live, uh, yun po ang uh, pagtatapos ng ating uh, morning session. Bigyan po natin ng masigabong virtual clap ang ating mga presenters. Maraming maraming salamat po. At uh, we will now have our lunch break and we will resume at 1.30 p.m. Uh, Mr. Ryan Joseph Abrigo will be your MC for the afternoon session. Naway matatili po tayong ligtas sa panahong ito ng pandemya. Maraming salamat po.